I'm Ashley Capel from the Arapahoe County Office of Emergency Management in Colorado. In life before COVID, our Office of Emergency Management's five-year strategic goal had been a dedicated physical space. We wanted to train, exercise, and respond in a space that was our own rather than reserve a block of time in a training room, which would naturally result in spending more time in setup and take down than actual training. In our last activation before COVID, it was a 2019 historic blizzard. We were in a cramped space for over 36 hours with only one large screen to share visual information. Road closure maps, location of assets, location of stranded motorists, weather, shelter status, and traffic camera footage to name a few. We had all of the data and access to it, but no access to display it. But less than one year later, we had it. In January of 2020, we held our EOC grand opening. With $200,000 in new computers and interactive displays, we had screen sharing and collaboration space. A month later, we activated for COVID and are still active. Fortunately, we unknowingly built in the technology to support a virtual EOC environment. Two prime examples are the resource mobilization system and information sharing via virtual meetings. In January 2020, we first beta tested our resource mobilization process and teams with a group of emergency management peers. In February 2020, we launched our beta build into the response of a global pandemic. It was based as a Microsoft form with a Power Automate flow to post a message into Teams. We processed nearly 800 orders using the beta version. Full of lessons learned and after action notes when Summer brought us a small reprieve, we launched an aggressive contractor-led timeline to build out a robust resource mobilization system. The system is based in teams with lists and power apps. We were driven to create a system that provided more than just data. The analytics behind the request became just as important. Who is making the request, how often, and what supplies? While we could do that before, it certainly wasn't simple. The new system links to a Power BI dashboard to further relay our data story. We could now see trends and lean forward on ordering additional supplies. Automatic triggers were established when inventory fell below thresholds. All of our data was truly connected. We distributed over 1 million pieces of personal protective equipment from our EOC logistics team. The master inventory is instantly updated once an order is fulfilled. This helps improve efficiency and reduce any data entry errors by eliminating extra spreadsheets and manual subtraction from inventory. The last connection to the entire system was creating the Power App to add quantity to our inventory. As soon as an order is delivered, items are quickly and easily added to the master inventory. We thrive on data and having live data allows each position in the EOC to make competent decisions. We are no longer waiting for an end-of-day spreadsheet update, and we no longer have to manipulate a copy of a spreadsheet to find out what percentage of our requests are for N95s or came from a particular assisted living facility. Top it all off with running from a cloud-based program, we could and did operate the resource mobilization system from both EOC and home. This would be a very different activation and a marathon, not a sprint to the finish. Once the EOC activated, we limited access to the physical space to ensure our exposures were reduced. During the height of COVID cases, our staff rotated through work from home schedules. Everything in the EOC ran through teams. Planning meetings, briefings, situation report updates, even the documentation unit was automated through the use of Power Automate. Each section in the EOC is represented as a channel and applicable personnel added to those channels. As we expanded in complexity, we even made new teams. One example was a virtual joint information center. Our public information officers came together weekly to provide updates via Teams. They had shared files and chats to stay up to date. This was especially beneficial as our team was communicating across a dozen external municipal and special district public information officers. Stakeholder information sharing briefings known as agency administrator meetings kicked off weekly. 
Over 50 key leaders from agencies across the county attended. Plans briefed all the data and provided visuals. Each EOC section gave an update followed by our critical partners, state, public health, mental health, hospitals, and school districts. The goal throughout was not only sharing of information, but distilling and analyzing this information. The data dashboards became an easy to digest source of information to convey that week's message. Using Teams, we could share our message visually, which is far more impactful. The ability to host these meetings with a small group in person and not lose continuity of message to the larger group virtually was paramount. When we prepared to discontinue the meetings, there was great disappointment as these meetings were profoundly beneficial and became something to rely on weekly. Our EOC is now permanently set up for video briefings, whether they be for standard patrol briefings or an agency administrator stakeholder meeting. The infrastructure is solidly in place to maintain situational awareness. Although we are fortunate to have reliable infrastructure, there are some lessons learned in order to leverage the virtual environment. There is a substantial amount of data moving across sections within the EOC. Although possible, technically speaking, to do this virtually, it isn't effortless. There needed to be a conscious engagement from each section. We could not rely on emails and posts and teams. These systems were already overloaded with information using these mediums. In order to combat this, we instituted daily noon EOC briefings. No one else was invited. It was just the EOC staff that could share updates. This was dedicated time to be present, not always physically present, but mentally. Looking back, this was our most valuable lesson. We had plenty of data and the technology to display and share. However, we needed to make a purposeful effort to sit down and distill, to analyze what these hundreds of data sources meant to our operation. Taking this time allowed the virtual environment to flourish and maintain a common operating picture. 